May God bless you abundantly and may the joy of our Lord and His Holy Mother be always in your hearts. Dear soldiers of Jesus and Mary, Corazón, I know it's been a long time since I have made a video and part of the reason is because I just have been very lazy, very lazy. And the other part was due to illness in my family. But today, as I was sitting in adoration, I saw the Blessed Sacrament, so shiny and beautiful. Then all of a sudden, I heard the Lord speak to my heart. And He asked, What is the right and what is the left? As I heard that, I immediately remembered the 2016 election, Hillary versus Trump. During that time, my son was just born and we were attending his baptismal classes at church. And the teacher had asked me to read St. Matthew chapter 25 verse 31 and I'll read it right now to you but when the son of man shall come in his majesty and all the angels with him then he will sit on the throne of his glory and before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left and when I read that I felt like immediately I knew the answer to what was happening at that moment we had the right we had Trump who was Republican and was fighting pro-life and in the other side was Hillary who's Democrat Democrat and was pro-abortion and not only that she agreed to kill the baby after it has been born so the right and the left and he will set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left so I continue reading the rest and I will continue reading that but what I read made more sense to me then the king will say to those on his right hand come blessed of my father take possession of the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for I was hungry and you gave me to eat I was thirsty and you gave me to drink I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you covered me sick and you visited me I was in prison and you came to me then the just will answer him saying Lord when did we see thee hungry and fed thee or thirsty 
and give thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and take thee in, or naked and clothe thee? Or when did we see thee sick or in prison and, co and come to thee? And answering, the king will say to them, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it for one of these, the least of my brethren, you did it for me. The least of my brethren. And when I, I began to think about the least, I thought, the least of the brethren are the unborn because they have no voice they're the smallest and they are the most being affected by abortion they are the victims so when I went back I thought about what Jesus really said and I imagined this I was hungry and you gave me to eat and when a baby is born the first thing he wants to do is eat he is hungry I was thirsty and you gave me to drink a baby is thirsty I was a stranger and you took me in what happens to the babies who are given for adoption? They are strangers and what do we do? We give them for adoption. We're taking in a strange baby into our home when we adopt. Naked and you covered me. A baby is born naked. Sick. And you visited me. There are so many premature babies in the ICU, in the hospital that are sick. And they're abandoned babies. Babies that have been uh, abandoned by mothers who were heavily drugged uh, with a lot of drug addiction. Who gave those baby up. And those babies are all alone in the incubators. And they need a hug. They need somebody to carry them. To feel the warmth. But nobody is there to carry them. Sick and you visited me. I was in prison. And you came to me. Many of these children. Who are orphanage. Or, uh, grow up in an orphanage. Or are abandoned. They end up in prison. They end up in prison. So that's why the Lord says, I was in prison and you came to me. Then the just will answer him saying, Lord, when did we, de when did we see thee hungry and feed thee? Well, that's when we did it. Being pro-life doesn't mean that you're just voting to save a life. Being pro-life means taking care of the least of the brethren. Because the least of the brethren is Jesus. And on the contrary, on verse 41, he then goes to say, Then he will say to those on his left hand, Depart from me. Accursed ones into the everlasting fire which was prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, 
and you did not give me to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer and say, Lord, when did we see thee hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to thee? Then he will answer them, saying, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did not do it for one of these least ones, you did not do it for me. And these will go into everlasting punishment, but the just into everlasting life. Powerful. Powerful. So after I finished reading this, I looked at my teacher and told him, Jesus is telling us the answer. Of course, the teacher was looking at me confused. But I went on to say, those on the right, he will say, Come, blessed of my Father, take possession of my kingdom, prepare for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and so on. The right is considered the Republicans in politics. The right is pro-life. When we are pro-life, we are defending the least of them all, the unborn, the baby that is unborn doesn't have a voice, we are his voice, and the left, the left are pro-abortion, the left thinks that if a woman is pregnant and they don't want the baby, they should just kill it. So that baby won't suffer or whatever they imagine. How could you kill a baby so that later on in life they won't kill him or he won't suffer? How do you do that? That's not a solution. And then the woman goes on to demand justice and respect how can a woman how can a woman ask for justice how could a woman ask for respect from the whole world when she herself does not respect her own body when she herself violates her own body abuses her own body with abortion how can after abortion you go on and demand for justice for women stopping violence for women when you yourself are violating yourself not only yourself but another human being how how can a woman who just went in and violated her body and killed her own baby go on to the world and demand rights for women and re and demand respect for women and stop the violence against women when she herself is violating her own body think about that the left is pro-abortion at that moment I felt like Jesus was making it very clear for us extremely clear he is god obviously he knew that the right was going to be pro-life and the left was going to be pro-abortion of course in our system the right and the left have been corrupted ever since i can remember but this is different this is different we have a man in office who is pro-life, who 
wants to defend the unborn. And on the other side, we have a person who to me is just a puppet of the New World Order. He's just there, you know, to look pretty, pro-abortion, just so that women, feminists, and I don't even know why they're called feminists, because they don't even have an ounce, an ounce of femininity, femininity. They're just there for, just to look pretty, pro-abortion. Pro-abortion. So, that's the difference. Pro-life and pro-death. Pro-abortion. The right and the left. He knew the right and he knew the left from the beginning. And he gave us a heads up with Matthew 25. The right defends the least ones, and the left aborts them. But this doesn't end with politics. We have a right and a left in the church as of right now. And I'll show you how we have a right and a left. We have the goats and the sheep in our own church. For example, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, the true vicar of Christ, is a reflection of Pope John Paul the Second. Pro life, pro family, pro traditions of the early family of the early church. Uh Marriage through Catholic Church, men, men and women, adoption, teaching the gospel through the example, and most important, the seven sacraments, baptism, confirmation, penance, matrimony, uh, holy order, unction of the sick, and Eucharist. Very important. Pope Benedict, who is the Vicar of Christ, and he is still guiding the Catholic Church, even though they are making us believe he is Biden right now. They are making us believe the Biden story, and you will see the, you can see that they work the same tricks everywhere. Um... Pope Benedict is the Vicar of Christ and the biting in the church is Bergoglio. Bergoglio, who is the false Pope named aka Pope Francis. Who obviously is not a legitimate pope. E even though they went through the whole process of the voting, they cheated. They used the same tricks. But Pope Francis, who took the name of St. Francis to mock him, as St. Francis of Assisi predicted an imposter, in a vision he had before he died. A false pope who brings confusion and division in the church. Some of his famous quotes, who am I to judge? Or abortion is not the most important thing. Or the cross is Jesus' failure. Or amores laetitium and his approval of couples living together, either same-sex marriage or men and women without marriage. <sighs> and the closing of churches, persecution of 
priests, loyal priests, communion in the hand, and the list goes on and on. Changing the Our Father, um, changing the, the Mass, changing the Apostles' Creed, the list goes on. That is the difference between the left and the right. The true church and the false church. That is the difference. As I finished writing this, I waited for the Lord. Then I suddenly heard my sweet grace. There are many things that I say in the Most Holy Bible. Things that could change the hearts of the most hardened hearts. Truth can never be hidden. Truth always shines like the sun in a hot sunny day. Truth, my word is truth. Evil cannot hide the truth because I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I bring light to darkness and darkness ceases to exist. Truth brings you joy and justice. Truth is love and peace. But most of all, Truth is my heart for mankind. Truth is the reflection of my face. Truth is the air that you breathe. And even though you are not able to see it, it is truly there. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And that was the end of Jesus' message. And I know that this can be very strong, a very strong message, especially for the lukewarm Catholics. Catholics that don't know what's going on. Catholics that believe what the media says. Catholics that have been following a false pope because they are from the world. And they like what he says. Catholics that are shaping into goats. There is still time. Don't go that path. There is still time. Come back to Jesus. Look for Him. Seek Him. Seek Him for answers. Don't believe what anybody tells us. Don't even believe me. Seek Him for answers. Fast and pray. And He will guide you where you need to be. Thank you so much, soldiers of Jesus and Mary. I bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I ask Jesus to bless you also. And our Holy Blessed Mother to protect us and to guide us in these difficult times. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Dios te salve, María. Llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, Ruega, Señora, por nosotros los pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Ave María, gracia plena, dominus tecum. 
Benedicta tu mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tu Iesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora por nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. May God bless you, soldiers of Jesus and Mary. And don't forget, Viva Cristo Rey!